Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about the last half of Scott Porter's Clicks Giving unboxing. We're going to be answering a ton of listener questions and some cool stuff like choosing our four horsemen of Hero Clicks and our uh, five DC characters we would want for legacy cards. This is episode 391. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some. Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your order. I love it. I just got um, a really a bunch of cool stuff in Cool Stuff Inc. I'll talk about it here in a bit. But join me, like always, in the studio. Is your dial for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks Brews? What is going yeah, on, Simeon? Yeah, if I was stuff, I'd be cool stuff. Okay. But I'm not. I'm not. You're not. You never will be. You'll never be stuff. Like that or meme where cool. it's like, uh, what were you doing? Oh, I was doing stuff. Hi, I'm stuff. Simeon will never be stuff. He will never actually. Never. No love in his life. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what, what I'm trying to do. Uh, Simeon, what made you happy this last week? My man my dude my guy oh this last week i you know it was finally finishing up some leftovers uh i had some good dessert stuff and so thanksgiving happened of course but more than thanksgiving is the what am i gonna do with like seven days worth of ham and mashed potatoes and all that stuff and finally finished some of that up got some space cleared out in the fridge so now i can return to eating good stuff like pizza and uh leftover pizza oh my gosh uh well good oh, i'm glad you liked that dude so i i don't know i had a great week i went back home had thanksgiving with my family uh, our cousin came over uh he is the funniest guy you'll ever meet he's just he's like he's literally just a character like i i don't know how to describe him but i there's no one on this earth that makes me laugh half as much as as my cousin Isaac the dude is just hilarious um he doesn't even try to like make jokes he's just like wacky in the way he tells stories I don't know he's just he's just really funny so like having him over was great um uh, every year for Thanksgiving we do a shoot off so we shoot clay pigeons uh they're basically little round discs we shoot skeet people know anything about shooting competitions uh, it's an Olympic sport it's the anyways vegan version of hunting yeah vegan version of hunting well sure if that's what we want to <laughs> what we want to call it um so yeah uh we I always do a shoot off you you have to hate it phrased that way so i i definitely do um <laughs> vegans are kind of uh, against my way of life so i'm sort of against theirs anyways you're trying to put him out of business wow. you're trying to put me out of business that's what i do for a living ladies and gentlemen a living the backbone of america i put food on your table on my table tables all across this country anyways uh, so we do to sh- we do a shoot off every year, and if there's interest in the Patreons watching it, we normally film it, and this ended up being like a 15 minute like video of us doing like this clay shooting. It's pretty fun. Uh, so we were shooting, and I've never, I've literally never won one of these ever. Um, my sisters won one, my dad's won them, my older brothers won them. Those have been kind of like the the people that I think my sisters only won once, but like my dad and my older brother like win the majority of the time. And this is the first year that I that I won our clay shoot off, and I was so excited. Um, and it was crazy to me because I have not shot a shotgun in a long time. I think the last time I shot it, I was uh, I believe I was aiming at a, a Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash starter set, I believe, um, and that wasn't even the same gun because that was a. Uh, double barrel 20 gauge not a uh, auto 12 gauge so um but yeah i i credit it to uh the countless hours of uh doom eternal and doom 2016 that i've been playing <laughs> um so yeah like winning the shoot off is pretty good this year it was a good time we also watched hawkeye 
man, what a uh, it's uh, it's a show. It's definitely a show. Um, we watched Shang Chi also as a family. This was the second time I've seen it. Shang Chi, I personally, um, for quick hot take here, uh, Shang Chi does not hold up on a rewatch. It is bo- boring. Oh, it's boring. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's rough. Um, so they, like rely and, on like the end game kind of like situation. It, I think so. Yeah, kind of like it really so has to ramp yeah. up. And I'm like checking, like, dang, do we really like do a Shang Chi flashback about his mom and dad for this long in the beginning before we even see him? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Gosh, that's taken forever. And then like the the big fight that I thought was cool, where you see like Abomination of Wong and like they they and then he fights his sister and what spoilers for Shang Chi by the way. Um, like I thought like that was a cooler scene, and I'm like, oh no, wait, I was about to like leave and go do some chores really quick. I was like, oh no, wait, let's let's stay for this really quick. Then I watched it, and I'm like, I guess I was okay. Yes. Um, and also Aquafina makes me want to shoot myself in the head. So. I yeah I I like the actor that Shang Chi and I really liked it the first time I watched it but man it's really cringy especially like when they're talking to their like their friends like they're having like drinks and whatever and they talk to their friends like in the beginning and then at the end when like Wong comes in and interrupts them that's like some really cringy like bad dialogue it's just really bad dialogue so I don't know uh, you guys can hate me for my Shang Chi opinions that's allowed but uh, yeah it it was on a rewatch that was that was rough. That was really rough. Um, anyways, no, Thanksgiving made me happy. Uh, I also watched Wizard of Oz uh, this week, and that was also really rough. Man, Wizard of Oz is kind of a bad movie, Simeon. Like, the I get original? that it's like, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because the, the original, original one's no, the original. not called Wizard of Oz. It's like, it's like Return to Oz. Oz. Return yeah, to Oz is Oz. bad because it's just hideous looking, and yeah. the design they've chosen for characters is horrible. Uh, I but I was we like, had Man. this argument last time where uh, Belinda is a witch, and you were like, no. And then I was like, yeah, she flies in a bubble. I don't remember what episode that was on, but yeah. Are you, we're, I think we were just quoting that video where it's like, she came down in a bubble, dog. You're going to tell me she's not, you're going to tell me she's not a witch? The Wicked Witch of the East, bro. The Wicked Witch of the North. You know that, you know that video? I do that not. guy's like arguing. You'll have to watch it. It's really funny. But like, man, uh, they spend like 20 minutes in like the real world or something in the original Wizard of Oz. I'm like, no way. I did not remember that as a kid. Yeah. And, and it then takes like, place in like Kansas. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. Kansas. Imagine. I couldn't. No. From Kansas. Yikes. And then like they finally like get there. And within like 40 minutes, like it only takes them like 20, 30 minutes to finally get through all this stuff. And like part of that is like 10 minutes in Munchkin land where they have a friggin' parade around town. It's like, whoa, I did not remember the opening taking this freaking long. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, yikes. And then, like, at the end, it's just sort of like, oh, yeah, you know those ruby slippers you got right away? Yeah, you can just, just <laughs> click those, and you didn't have to do any of this. Oh, and by the way, it was also all a dream. And then then you realize, like, oh, my gosh, all those... You uh, were there. And you, you were there. there. You were there. Yeah, all of those uh, cliches that I hate in current media were from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> like, yeah. like Mad Max, where it's like, a, oh, we just ended right back at the beginning. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That sucks. So stupid. Or the, it was all a dream. Oh, it sucks. It's so stupid. I'm like, oh, wait, that was just The Wizard of Oz. Huh. See, if Dorothy, if Dorothy knew the rules of RPGs, she would have checked the stats on the ruby slippers, and it would have saved yeah. them all a ton of time. Yeah, it was pretty stupid of her. It's hindsight. All right. One last weird story before we actually talk about hero clicks. Are you, are you okay with that, Simeon? Or we can yeah. mix it. Okay. How do you know how chicken parm is made? I clearly I, don't. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So I had somebody. Someone's going to come over to the house, and they said, "Hey, can you make uh, chicken parm?" Not knowing what I had in my my kitchen, of course. So I was like, "Yeah. If I can't make it, I'll order some." So uh, I didn't have any chicken. I had noodles. I didn't have any parmesan. I didn't have anything else that would maybe be related to chicken parm. Did I Google what chicken parm was? Absolutely, I did not. <laughs> did I did I call uh, the classic restaurant uh, El Fredo's? Simeon knows. Ian yeah. knows. Uh, did I call El Fredo's and say, hey, do you guys have like a chicken parm? And they were like, we have like a chicken fettuccine Alfredo. And I'm like, okay, that could work, but it can't be Alfredo. Do you? And they're like, well, we have 
you know, we do do, we make wings and we could just put the garlic Parmesan sauce in that. I'm like, perfect. That's it. That's chicken and parm, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah, noodles. That's ch- chicken. That's and parm. chicken. Check. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, chicken and garlic Parmesan. I'm yeah, like, it doesn't need to be fried. No. Apparently. Yeah. So I, that was very much not what chicken parm apparently is. So I finally get it and I played it up and I think it's real nice. And we're sitting there, we're eating it. And uh, they go, I was like, oh, this is really good. Wow, thanks. You really, you know, pulled one out there. And then like halfway through the meal, I'm like, this is disgusting. Say it's disgusting because this is gross. This is this is not this is not good food. This is chicken, uh, like chicken wing sauce in <laughs> replacement of fettuccine <laughs> Alfredo sauce or like Alfredo sauce or whatever. This isn't chicken parm, is it? They're like, no, this isn't chicken parm at all. Chicken parm is like fried chicken with like marinara sauce on so i'm like wait what yeah yeah the i parm and mozzarella usually i was uh i was completely wrong and it was incredibly disgusting so um if you ever want to uh bring great shame to a uh, an italian chef near you you can ask them to yeah. do that um, that does sound like the the worst version of an americanized terribleized version of uh, another dish although chicken i don't think chicken parm is i don't I, i'm pretty sure chicken parm is an american dish i don't think that's like a import thing for sure i think we did make it up here because it's already kind of like a just weirdly gross like pasta dish usually <laughs> yeah. but if it's made good it's good yeah um so yeah that that's been my week those are my adventures uh this week so um yeah without further ado let's go ahead and get into the news we got some scott porter unboxing stuff to talk about here simeon what what was new what was neat so sadly he talked about his chase was thor and then he got the other chase which was hulk given to him by his kids which we've sadly already seen and we kind of know both are already pretty lackluster to kind of bad bad yeah bad. dial wise so, not the greatest so just yeah. to reiterate thor comes in at 300 200 100 points um he's interesting it's just like at 300 points he's not holding his own against a 300 point team at 200 he's probably coming closer but it takes a lot more investment for stats that you can see on like a 50 point character sometimes. And then at 100, he's just kind of squishy and he's pretty generic four clicks long at a hundred points. And then the Hulk is a little more interesting except top dial Hulk is 225 points for 10 clicks and bottom Hulk is 50 points for three clicks also has one singular stop click it's a lot of like similar flavors against across the uh, the heavy hitters, I guess we'd consider of the chases. Um, I don't know the Hulk being more interesting. The sculpt was cool to see. Same with the Thor. The Thor sculpt was cool to see. Uh, dials remain kind of lackluster. Yeah, yeah. They they really they just leave a lot to desire. I think um, part of that is just invincible. Being yeah. benched. I mean, really, Thor and and Hulk and and Sentry. Like, I mean, I guess Sentry can at least reduce penetrating. But I mean, Invincible being benched really hurts these guys. But uh, Simeon, let's talk about you know one or two figures each or whatever was kind of like stuck out to us for these last few days for uh, the Scotty P unboxings. You know, so what uh, would you want to talk about? You know, a little bit. I was kind of neat here. I'll talk about the rare Prime T'Chaka two. So we Ooh, did okay. mention him before, but um, so he's got one interesting thing. He's 45 points. He is a prime. We've seen a lot of, I'm not even going to say like T'Challa or Black Panther because the, the, this one is T'Chaka too, but we've seen a lot of like Wakanda primes in the last couple of years. Um, so the big thing for this one is the trait distracting banter once per turn, which I kind of want to know what the character is in comics. So I would understand this more because I don't think Spider-Man's ever had distracting banter as a trait. I know, right? So, and he is always flapping his laps. Right. Lips. This, this guy must be real good at it cuz uh once per turn when an opposing character within range makes an attack after all rerolls and die replacements. So it's weird they specify rerolls and die replacements. You may roll a d6 and subtract half the result before finalizing the attack roll. 
Um, so this kind of it doesn't circumvent anything. I shouldn't say that, but uh, this would be like a you're going up against Q prime or something like that. And your opponent, let's say they roll like a five and a one. They replace the one with another five or like with a six then you still get to do this afterwards. Typically, it would be like, if you prob, you have to prob before a die is replaced. This happens after all of that. So it happens after prob, after die replacements. Your opponent has to choose whether they're going to replace it or not. And then you still get to subtract three from the result, which this is... um, I can't remember which black cat did this, but there was a black cat that did the same uh, roll a d6 and subtract half the result from the finalized attack roll. And it's a really cool power. You wouldn't think it would come up nearly as much as it does, but combined with the special speed power showing off to impress the ladies charge flurry and stealth, and then an 18 combat reflexes. Uh, This prime should have a 20 for most attacks coming their way. And then you also get to subtract a D half of a D six roll. So that's pretty decent staying power. I think he's going to, pull his weight and sealed for sure. And then maybe yeah. even make it to like a Wakanda team, maybe a ruler team. I don't really know what their prime, their prime has like Vulcan and gladiator and stuff. So maybe not, but yeah, there's, there's options. It, dude, I just am starting to really like the exiles keyword, you know, yeah. now that's branching off from like so many mutant characters and stuff where it's, we got like this Tachaka is really cool. I mean, charge flurry stealth uh, with 11 for three, you know, blades top dial. I think that's great. For sealed, you know, for prime pick, you know, it's not really like the powerhouse you really want it to be. But, you know, stealth, 18 combat reflexes. I really like this dude. I really like him a lot. So, like, his bane is obviously, like, ignores hindering, which is just going to nuke him. But yeah. I really like him. Like, I really do. Because then, even then, whatever, that whole dire placement and everything, especially, like, it's just cool. Like, I like the distracting banner trait. It's fun. Um, yeah, they do have to be me... within range, so... Uh, True, if, but if six your is opponent has, like, yeah. You know? But if your opponent has like seven, and they manage to improve targeting, hindering, and shoot, like you know, all of a sudden that's not helping. But I think most of the attacks coming his way are going to be close combat or within six at least. Yeah. No, I really like him, and like this is like one of those times where it's like you know what, I'm not even bummed to, to get a prime, but it's just once again, dude, we have so many primes that are versions of Black Panther. Isn't it crazy? It's we have Black Leopard. It's, we yeah. have Azuri. We have the Black Panther Prime from ABPI. Yeah, the weird song. Now this one. one or whatever. Yeah. There's so many. They just really like making Black Panther, you know, characters. But like that mantle, they really like making that a prime for whatever reason. It just, it seems like that's a prime more often than not. It's crazy for, you the know, cool a Marvel thing set, is, I mean. We haven't really like doubled up on. So they all do pretty different stuff. We have no, they do. Yeah, doubled up on True. you know just uh like super senses blades. You know, we haven't seen like just a generic thrown away one. At least there's I feel like that. there's uh this is I don't know. oh no definitely it's I'm not saying they're all the same. I'm just saying like it's crazy that so many of them are just like primes. You know, I, I'm sure Ed Shelton's like yeah, my wallet is well aware of how many prime Black Panthers they've been making. Well, Thank you be, very much. The worst part is like you can't play some of like the best Wakanda pieces together because they're all. Oh, well, that's true. You have yeah, to pick the up. best one. Or best it is a bummer, you know. It's like you, you'll want to play like Black Leopard. Black Leopard would be great with this yeah. guy too. You know, ah, oh, dang, yeah. yeah, that combo would be great. Uh, the I can't remember the. It's just Black Panther. It's like the ninety-five point. Uh, yeah, I want to say Warlords. Frogs of Solomon or one. whatever. He makes or, the Warlords right. Yeah, with the prob. He, yeah, he probs cool. and makes Warlords. Um. That one's great at bystanders for probing. I would say none of those primes are like the ones that would have even gotten a unique base in the first place. So I think, you know, maybe some special house rules. You could be like, yeah, like we don't need that, you know? So yeah, like anyway, anyways, now I like this T'Chaka. He's T'Chaka too, excuse me. He's really, really cool and like a really fun figure. Like he just feels fun. And I like that. Uh, I'm going to talk about another rare Uh, human torch, Jim Handen, Jim Handen. Jim Hammond, goodness gracious. Uh, sorry for the disrespect there, Jimmy. Um, dude, what a sculpt. What a cool, cool sculpt. I love it. If you guys have not seen the sculpt yet, I implore you to check out the Scott Porter video. I don't remember which one it is, but when he pulls Jim Hammond's Human Torch, it is so cool. Uh, I love it. 
it's it's a very simple 45 point character there's a lot of things i like about it once again so he's got shield six range one bolt 45 points invaders past police robot and shield solid keywords all of course very fitting for jim here improved movement characters i like that a lot he's of course a flyer he has the follow-up trait um so if you're unfamiliar with it it's free once per turn for all characters with a follow-up trait make an attack using human torches printed combat values but only to target a single character hit with an attack made by another friendly character with the shield keyword so it's kind of cool you know you get a, a free little attack here which is pretty neat but uh jim is always a 10 for three so it's no no crazy combat values but another three damage is solid he uh he starts with running shot pen blast with esd uh so his stats are the same the entire dial which i really like i think when it's a robot character their stats shouldn't change and the first time i noticed they did this was like a vision from age of ultron so i don't you know i don't know how often they've done this with robots but i think um you know, like, in, unlike people, people get injured and tired and whatever, you know, but like robots don't. So in some cases, if parts aren't flying off, it makes sense that a robot just sort of functions the same, you know, maybe some tech nerd will correct me. But either way, I, I like that the stats are consistent. So he's a 10 speed the whole way through, which is great with flight, especially in sealed 45 point flyer with 10 speed is awesome. Uh, a 10 attack the whole way through. 17 defense the whole way through, a little rough, and then, of course, you know, an average, a three damage the whole way through. He also has enhancement and leadership, his entire dial, that's his motivational leader special power, um, which is great in sealed. So, already, I love this dude in sealed. A 45.6 range running shot pen blast piece top dial is really make or break in a lot of sealed games. Like, he's a really good, I'm not going to say secondary attacker, but he can take pot shots at people. And he's enough to, he can't be ignored, and he has at least five clicks of life, so he's not going to totally get one shot in shield. Also, his enhancement can go a long way, especially if you pull a lot of those little sidekick dudes, um, like what Simi and I were talking about earlier off show of the podcast, the the Kree soldiers are pretty bad <laughs> sidekicks. Um, but with this dude's enhancement, you know, they can at least be an 11 for three, or, you know, if they're whatever, uh, What's the bell dan? Bell dan he'll, make them a, yeah. he'll make them a 12 for four then, right? Because he does plus one attack and damage. So like then it actually makes them pretty good once you have some enhancement going on. Uh and then sadly, they don't have sidestep right away, of course. So their shield team ability isn't as useful as it could be. But uh Jim's shield team ability, I think, is great. He has enhancement, he has shield. So if Jim isn't attacking and you have an even better main attacker, he can bump them up their damage plus two and their range plus one which is pretty dang awesome. So I really like that for Jim, even if he's, if like, and that's not a bad use of 45 points. I like it a lot. Um, he has good enough keywords. I wish he had soldier. Uh, that's okay. Um, for leadership to work off of. Uh, invaders, not going to be very useful, but shield is probably the most useful keyword that his leadership is going to work for. Other than that, maybe past. I haven't, sometimes I'll do like total rundowns of keywords and sets, but it's, it's, I think shield is going to be his most useful one. So his leadership isn't very big except for adding that extra action uh, for it. So I think in sealed, this dude is stellar outside of it. He's an okay 45 points, a fun casual piece and a pretty all right. Jim Hammond here. He, uh, once he loses running shot, pen blast ESD top dial, the rest of his dial is all toughness. And then it's some sidestep with no, you know, no attack value. And then on click four, he goes back to his running shot, pen blast days, uh, and then ends again on a sidestep, no attack click. Very simple, but man, just for just sculpt glad. alone, I like it. I like it a lot. Like, you know, even though it's a very simple dial, I really do like it. Yeah. I think I think the best part is that Invader's keyword now finally has a definitive leader. Because um, prior, like, you know, nothing, you know. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there anybody else you want to talk about here, <laughs> Scotty Pold? Uh I think we have to talk about, uh, so two uncommons were, were really impressive to me. Uh, and one of them is the number 030 Daredevil. Okay. And so this guy comes in at 75 points and 25 points. And so we hardly have to talk about the 75 point dial, but I will just because. So the reason I do not care at all about the 75 point dial is he's a running shot in cap piece with four range. Uh, he does have triple target, which is good with in cap. Um, and he's got outwit super senses top dial. So he's got nine speed, 11 attacks, 
for the first three clicks, 18 defense with super senses and then three damage without wit. Not terrible. It's just that four range with running shot is like he might as well be a close combat piece. The real cool thing is he still gets to use that triple target with close combat. So you at least have that going for him. Uh, He has traded stealth. That's all he has. He doesn't have any special powers or anything else. He has improved movement through elevated and characters and then improved targeting through hindering. So in sealed, you might play him at top dial just to be able to outwit anyone in stealth. Um, And then the more impressive part for me is bottom dial for 25 points. Oh, he also has the Spider-Man team ability, so you can copy other team abilities, which is good and sealed because you've got a lot of, you've got Guardians. Is Guardians copyable? I don't remember. I don't think it was. Yeah, I don't Um... think it was. But you do have um, the, that you have plenty of shield. Uh, There's probably some PD some stuff like that going on Avengers, whatever you want to copy. Um, But for 25 points, you've got a flurry 10 attack in cap 17 defense with combat reflexes with that traded stealth and then two damage with prob control. So the keywords are Avengers, defenders, heroes for hire, martial artist, Marvel Knights, Spider-Man family fits on a ton of named theme teams. And then I guess martial artists, you know, you also get that. But for 25 points, he's got that prob. He's got flurry with triple in cap. He's got a lot of stuff going on for that really small point value. And as long as your opponent isn't targeting through hindering to like get rid of his stealth or whatever, um, I think it's probably one of like the best. Well, it in my opinion, it is the best 25 and under piece because there's not anything else that's even remotely close. You've got like the scroll spy and Kree soldier are the only things even remotely near that. Yeah. But like, dude, gosh, I love that so much. Like, especially when he's just an uncommon and sealed. Yeah. A cheap odd piece. That's gnarly with this trade stealth. Yeah. It's more Beautiful. than possible to pull like two of these guys. Oh, and then one sixth of your build that. is two probs. And if they yeah. do base him for whatever reason, you've got flurry. You've only got two damage, but you've got flurry with triple target in cap. So, a lot and of I offense. believe uh, this Daredevil is officially now the cheapest Avengers defenders. All of his keywords prob, I believe. Probably pretty close, yeah. I I assume I think so. Like that's really sweet, and and it's cool that it's Daredevil too, and not some random character no one cares about. Like it's, I love it when it's like a character that's good, and it's a character people care about. You know, like. Daredevil here, like that's that's really cool. I I like it a lot. No, I love this Daredevil at twenty five points. Asterisk. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead uh, for my second pick, and probably the last one I'm gonna talk about here. Uh, Requiem, though, I really I I really like her. Um, because I played uh Joker's Wild Sealed uh, a few weeks back, right? And I played my friend Katana. I don't get because the don't get killed by her because. Because the sword takes souls of the living, you know. Uh, and she had a whole thing where if she killed somebody, she got to like choose steel energy or some other like willpower and like stuff like that, right? And this character has all of that, but it just kind of mixed in. So this Requiem is Gamora, uh, zero range, two bolts though, so cool, two targets on close, 70 points, assassin, cosmic, and warrior, uh, charge. She has a full dial of outwit, first of all. Uh, 10 speed charge, top dial, 11 attack blades, 18 defense toughness, full dial of toughness, except for her last click, which is a stop click. Uh, but she has six clicks of life, which is cool. Uh, sidestep on her second two clicks. Last two clicks have stealth. Uh, a little rough. Uh, four clicks of blades. Last two clicks have poison, um, but pretty solid you know, powers here and there. But she has a trait. I'm just here to kill you. When Requiem KOs an opposing character for the rest of the game, she can use steel energy and has the power cosmic team ability. Ooh, baby, I like that a lot. Um, so it just keeps her going. You know, it's really sweet. Uh, and then her stop is when the click is first revealed, remove all action tokens from Requiem, which is another way to just sort of keep her going. Uh, so Requiem, I think, is a solid sealed pick. She's an outwit. She's a close combat attacker. Sadly, no stealth. Sadly, no flurry, which makes it a little rough. But I mean, a really easy way to just make her very annoying is to just run up Kill a sidekick really quick. 11 for 3. I think kills every sidekick in this set. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have 4 clicks. But anyways. Yeah. You'd have to um, roll blades. But... That's roll blades. Okay. 
But uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to have to yeah. hit them twice either way. They're four clicks long. Yeah, you're going to have to hit them twice either way. So yeah, might as well. You might as roll well blade. roll blades because worst you're going to do is two clicks of damage. So yeah, if you can get lucky, one shot a sidekick. There are some two click characters. I mean, we just talked about Daredevil. I don't think she's going to kill Daredevil. Just not with not with his 19, but maybe, maybe. Um, probably not with the 19 prop, but maybe, big maybe. Um, so... And she can also kill just it, when she KOs an opposing character. So it can be a bystander. So if there are some Ultron Jones or Kotai, Cody, whatever, warriors out there, maybe just like one shot those really quick. And now you have a steel energy, uh, cosmic energy, Gamora with a stop click that is super duper annoying. Yeah. And so, I mean, with protected outwit. And outwit, <laughs> protected outwit. So I love this rare uh, as a sealed pick. I think it's also great for a battle royale. And I think she'll be really fun especially i like alternate versions of characters that are easy to get a hold of so this alternate version of gamora easy to get a hold of and i think it's just going to be pretty fun and sealed meta competitive no not really but i think she's a pretty fun character to play yeah i think it's a solid dial for what it is and for being an um the non-prime version so the prime is going to be like normal gamora i'm guessing it'll have <laughs> guardians and stuff like that but for being a non-prime it's pretty solid. I mean, yeah. it's not, yeah, it's not going to win a sealed, but it's a pretty decent rare to pull. Uh, there aren't a ton of heavy hitting rares. There's a few decent ones, but this is definitely one of those ones where it'll be more headache than your opponent was thinking. And I really love figures that like you're the whole front of the dial is trying to base somebody. And then once you get knocked down dial, you've got outwit poison. That is a really fun combo. Being able to like, fun yeah. for me, oh. not for fun for uh, other people. Uh, the last one I'll mention, I it's you know it's an okay figure. It's cool sculpt, and that's probably the best that it's going to do. And it's uh, yeah. number zero two nine Quicksilver. So Ooh. it's another uncommon. I really like how fleshed out the uncommons and co the commons, uncommons, and rares in this set turned out to be. Um, I was a little worried, but they, they turned out to be pretty interesting. So this guy comes in at 60 or 35 points. So he's not going to be out there upsetting the flash by any means. But uh, for 60 points, yeah, I mean, you it, the dial's the same. So for 60 points, you're going to get three more clicks than you do for 35. You'll get 11 attacks instead of 10. You'll get 18 defenses for those three clicks, three damage for those three and then you'll start with a 14 charge. So now we'll talk about the actual dial that people will use, which is the 35.1, where you start with a 12 speed charge, 10 attack, 18 defense with super senses, and 3 damage. Um, he has one trait, and that is faster than the eye can see. Sidestep, when Quicksilver uses charge and hits, after resolutions you roll a d6 on a 4 through 6, so you get a 50-50, you choose 1. You either get a plus one action total till the end of your turn, or you can place him in the square he occupied when given the action, which gives him kind of like a yo-yo effect. He can run up six squares, get placed back where he was, and then like sidestep away. Um, he does only have a 10 attack, and you do have to hit. doesn't say that you have to damage, though, so if someone rolls like they're impervious, that's fine. Uh, and then he has a special attack power his whole dial and that is supersonic punch when quicksilver uses charge and moves in a direct path he has knockback this action not great but it's something um you could really put some distance between you and an opposing character if you charge six in a direct path hit him knock yeah. him back three squares get placed back six more squares so now there's what nine ish squares 10 squares and then you've got sidestep mm -hmm. you could really like and then uh he does have improved movement for characters so you don't have to worry about getting tied up or anything like that he's pretty mobile he has the avengers and brotherhood of mutants team abilities uh keywords are avengers brotherhood of mutants inhumans and speedster which mm. it's been a while since we've seen speedster uh actually no speed weasel from x-men rise and fall yeah but it's not usually given out. Scott Porter also got it, I guess. Um, it's not <laughs> typically given Stop out. Stop me. It's uh, to me. You're gaslighting yourself. No, please. Don't do this to yourself. It's just a, a fun 
generic keyword that you can't really build around very easily. But uh, for 35 points, I think this Quicksilver, I mean, maybe you play him at 60 and sealed if you didn't pull anything better. But I like the one benefit is he can pick up a light object, I guess. I don't know. He does have a nine square reach top dial uh, compared to his eight square reach bottom dial. So maybe that's worth the extra 25 points. Um, no, I just, I really like him. I think it's a, a solid little figure and it's got a cool sculpt for an uncommon. Uh, I kind of want to play it in multiples. See if I can do something like uh, emotional modifier or something, drop my opponent's defense and oh, yeah, there you go. hit as many like four through sixes and just have like an infinite action total turn. I think that'd be really fun. Okay, that would be hilarious. It's not competitive. <laughs> I don't think that tactic would ever work competitively. And you are investing... For two of these, you're investing... Let's see, that's 70, 70. points. That's yeah. two flashes. Mod, 80, yeah. And flash gives you a little bit more. Well, 70 points is three flashes, really. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. 50. Yeah. Yeah. That's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> maybe not as good as Flash, but that is a super I guess. Rare. I do think this could make a dent in Flash's uh, price, not in the competitive sense, but like if there was anyone that casually wanted to run a speedster with like a really high top end and some like cool effects, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, but I do like him a lot. Like, he's really cool. Yeah, that one guy on eBay that repaints things and puts the other dial so you can have, like, the expensive figure for cheaper. <laughs> this what? Is a good... Have you never seen those? No. Oh, no, he'll not take, at like, all. Uh, he'll take, like, a common flash and repaint it, like, the whatever, the, the God of Death flash. And then he'll sell okay. it for, like, 20 bucks. And he puts, like, the god of death flashes uh card and like dial on so it's it's completely not like for tournament use but if you want a proxy for like 20 dollars, you can do it oh uh, yeah it's weird yes so hero clicks yeah. weird it's it not is, the worst thing that's sold on ebay hero clicks related though no <laughs> oh there's enough there's almost enough ebay hero click shenanigans that you and i know about we could do a few episodes <laughs> on those. Off the record. Oh yikes! Yeah, our off the record. Uh, Call it trying off the to dial. Off the. Oh my gosh! Write that down. Write that down. Um. All right, but that's pretty much news. Oh, I guess also news. Eternals didn't come out this week. Are we? Are you shocked? Are you shocked, Simeon, that Eternals set didn't wasn't released? I am I'm not shooken. surprised. Um. I am so ready for Gilgamesh. Um, Sprite and favorite Angelina Jolie. Um, those are the only ones I remember. Makari, so, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, I will say one thing about Eternals. Have you have, have you seen Eternals yet, Simeon? I have not. No, the the movie okay. does have me intrigued. It, so I've been really trying hard not to see any trailers. I want to go into a movie completely fresh, which really upset me because I had managed to not watch a single Spider Man trailer. And then YouTube dropped one in like the ad without me being able to skip it. So I had to like divert my head. I was like, no. I feel like this last trailer really spoils the main plot of the movie too. Yeah, it did. I mean, I, like, I still don't really what I know what's going to happen, seemed... but like, I mean, well, no. Yeah, I pretty much already know the plot, which is fine. But yeah. no, Eternals so far, other than them being like Eternals and fighting. Um, what looks like the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern monsters. Mm. Uh, other than that, I have no idea what's going to happen in the movie, so that's refreshing to me. Nice. Now spoil I... it for me, Colt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've never seen it. I have not seen it either. So it is also... Um, I've got no clue. I've got no clue, and it's already out of the theater here in my uh, my closest local theater, so... Maybe I'll probably, I'm probably, I'm honestly, I'll probably see it when it's on Disney Plus. I, yeah. Yeah, I need to get Disney Plus back or I need to get like the premium pass to uh, my local Alamo. Yeah. You know what they serve at the Alamo though? Uh, Alamo. Oh, chicken 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 
Actually, a local one got shut down because they served a drink that turned out to be cleaning product. So, Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Turns out, like, if you order a wow. liquor and it is like a fluorescent blue and it smells like you would use it to scrub, I don't know, stains out of clothes or blood off of walls, probably don't yeah. drink it. Like, probably shouldn't. Probably don't drink that. Yeah, I like drink it. And like, put it in yeah, the hospital. Yeah, yeah. The person oh, drank man. it and was like, hey, this doesn't taste right. And the guy was like, well, it was in the bottle. That's like what the mix is. What? The person, I don't know if they continued drinking it, but yeah, I think it was wow. pretty apparent right away. Amazing. Uh, well, all right then. Um, Still I think better that's than Walter's chicken parm, though. Oh, okay. All right, Samin. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. Okay, like it was edible. It was still edible food. Uh, it was just disgusting, and the flavors felt wrong in the mouth. You know. So, anyways, uh, with news being over, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys that we're about to answer some questions from our Patreon. And if you want to send us questions on Patreon, first of all, you don't have to pay. If you want to send us questions, you can send them to us on our Twitter at Dial H for Hero Clicks with a four instead of an F O R E. You can send them to us on Facebook, Dial H for Hero Clicks. So give those a follow and a like, respectively. You can also send us an email. We have people send us emails. It's Dial H for Hero Clicks, all spelled out, at gmail.com. But yeah, if you want to join our Patreon, we have really cool tokens. I have already made control tokens and power cosmic tokens for Thor and Thanos in this upcoming set. Uh, as well as we have some pretty cool Shi'ar Light Flag tokens. We got some Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy tokens. Uh, we have all sorts of really cool action tokens and really cool stickers that pay homage to uh, old feats and battlefield conditions that you can earn when you join our Patreon. We also give away t-shirts and posters and all sorts of cool stuff. So I think our Patreon is probably one of the best ones you can join, bang for your buck-wise, because you are getting product every single month if you are like $3 or above. Like, you give out three bucks, you get a sticker every month. You know, like, it's pretty darn cool. So, and if you just want to, you know, toss a buck our way to support the show, to help us reach some of our goals, you know, we got to get that $500 goal so Simeon can get his tramp stamp of Wolverine after all. Uh, you know, I don't, I haven't forgotten. Um, like, just, you know, toss a dollar I way, a our way. Stamp. It means, it, oh, it certainly will be. Uh, I guess. I'm taking back. Um, term <laughs> i don't know what you're going for but all right so yeah. triumph stamp. um oh gosh yikes but yes please if, it would be great it would mean a lot if you guys uh supported us on patreon um and almost more than that uh give us a subscribe to the old youtube you can watch really cool gameplay videos we've got some bizarro gameplay coming up this coming week where you can see how the bizarro rules work uh we have uh, generic bracket tournaments going on right now where we're having all the sidekicks uh generics from wonder woman fight each other and uh, we just uploaded a new sculpt swap where I paint the Fantastic Four deep cuts. And some more sculpt swap will be coming your guys' way pretty soon once Simeon gets his new camera and everything figured out. So definitely be on the look on YouTube. And we're having a really, really cool video for the end of the year for Christmas. It's a really fun gameplay. Um, it's I'm very excited for you guys to see it. It was both fun and painful for me and Simeon to film it, which means it's probably one of our better videos. Um, so, yeah, definitely check out the YouTube tell you what like, spiel yeah makes me want to uh well let's let's just say i i always thought i wanted to visit a country and after doing this gameplay i'm having second thoughts i'm sure the people uh, i it, but i yeah. agree i think i'll just listen to some akadaka in my own in my own free time <laughs> you know uh so all right we're gonna go ahead and move on to our listener questions there are dozens of us we have three listener questions here, which are pretty cool. Uh, Alex goes on to ask. He's going to ask us a question. Basically, it got kind of confusing in what I was trying to figure out what Alex wanted. So he says, uh, who are the four horsemen of Hero Clicks and what do they represent? Um, there was some confusion going on. I think what I ended up kind of, in my mind, putting it to was going to be four Hero Clicks figures that were very known for a certain mechanic is kind of what boiled it down to me, I guess, in my eyes. Not so much a or hero clicks figures that are war, famine, death, and pestilence. Right. So I think when we say like a top four like this, I always called it like the Mount Rushmore of people. Like when you say like, ah, who are the four best, whatever. Not that Mount Rushmore is the four best presidents. It's obviously not. It's just I can't whatever. But like that's sort of what people use that phrase. Like who's your Mount Rushmore of basketball? And they'll put like LeBron James and 
you know, Kobe Bryant or like whoever, you know, that's sort of what, what I consider it to mean. Or if you say like, who's your Mount Rushmore wrestling, you put like Hulk, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, whoever, you know, like, yeah, basically your top four pretty much. So, Simeon, what are your four horsemen of hero clicks? Uh, how did you interpret it? Uh, you know, what's what's your what are, what are yours based off of mine or based off of like specific mechanics? Um, but yeah, I'm curious what you got going on, my man. Yeah, so uh, I decided to to kind of just do a something that I covered multiple angles of the question. So when I think of hero clicks, this is like strictly in the competitive sense, because I don't think casual people, casual people have their own metas and their own, like, I really hate this figure because of this reason, that kind of thing. But, uh, I decided to go with, um, four things that like impacted like the meta in different ways. So I have the, the horsemen of what I call control, uh, Ooh. the horsemen of what I call retaliation, uh, Ooh. the horsemen, I'm, I don't really know. Uh, let's say I'll call this one the Horseman of Intimidation. And then uh, my last one is the Horseman of, we'll just say, like, support. Because um, it doesn't really make sense. Okay. Any, it doesn't really okay. make sense in any kind of way. But um, So my Horseman of Control is Rebirth's Oz. So and the mm. reason why I call him the Horseman of Control is because for 40 points, he not only extends your TK radius, but he also changes your opponent's tk radius so if you're a tk team you need that tk and your opponent has an oz and you don't it becomes a very strange dynamic it's a hard figure to take down and then on top of all of that he also has prob with a range value of 12 that sees through blocking elevated and characters it's kind of nuts it is 40 points like everyone probably knows mr oz by now but until you like really map out 12 range, <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. Like 12 range on a hero clicks map is pretty crazy. He can see most of the board right off the bat. And then if he moves up any like amount, he can see any more, like just even more. Um, my horseman of retaliation, I'm going to go with Mangog because. I don't know if there's a more iconic. They're probably, I mean, yeah. you can argue about like the veracity of like some retaliators over others, but Mangog's whole gimmick was kind of the retaliation thing. Uh, so not only did he retaliate and completely devastate teams, he was one of the only retaliators that ever got impervious on his stop click, meaning he could roll out of attacks, which I have, I did see Mangog's make impervious rolls back to back. Uh, yep. And then when he did retail, if you weren't out of your starting area or quite a ways away from your starting area, he could sidestep in, pull the Odin sword, and all of a sudden he's a 150-point piece that you can't deal with. Um, yeah, Mangog's yeah. just kind of mean. Just a real bad dude. Um, then my, my Horseman of Intimidation. So I would say, like, something like about how this figure was overpowered or something, but I think it just really defined the entirety of like 2017 was like prepping for this figure, hardly ever playing against it. And that's of course uh, Unimind. Yeah. Yeah. So Unimind was one of those figures where you always had to be prepared to play against it. You always had to see if your team could take down a Unimind. A lot of people would be like, okay, if I play with this strategy and these figures, I can pop uni on turn, whatever. That was, yeah, that was a pretty common like math that people would have to do. Uh, at least for a couple years and so yeah i don't i don't want to say unimind was like overpowered i mean he clearly is overpowered in my opinion but i don't want to say like that's why he's on the list it's purely for that intimidation factor for the what if he shows up kind of thing um and then my last is just simply the wwe ring it's a good support oh. piece so it's okay yeah for what is it 10 points i can't even remember Five. now Five, yeah. Five, Five yeah. points. Being able to... I don't think there's a better way to lose map and then just like open up a huge area. A assuming it's not a map like the Galador Promenade where it's all elevated. Being able to slam this down in like a blocked off map and just destroy all the blocking and whatever, it becomes a ring. Um, that's really cool. The boxing ring does the same thing. 
for like that aspect. This one's just a little bit better when it comes to uh, it's five points for your team as opposed to like five points anywhere kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I really think I think the boxing ring gets to be a horseman on horseback. The yeah, you know, the turnbuckles and ropes ride. So you beautiful, it's real big. I love it's it. like a Clydesdale. It's a whole pack of Clydesdale. True. Yeah. No, I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, all right. No, I like that. So I we both kind of went the same way. So I, I have my horseman of ping damage, my okay. horseman of pick yeah, a power, yeah. my horseman of alpha strike, and then my horseman of uh, mm-hmm. call in battery, I guess, is right. what I will uh, what I'll call these guys. So uh, horseman of ping damage uh, has got to go to mini shredder. I yeah. mean, I think. Mini Shredder is definitely the Horseman of Ping damage. Obviously, uh, close second to Shredder clone. I mean, Shredder clone for a close second. And then for other Ping in the past, there's of course, uh, what's their face? The cop cars and stuff. And there's oh, there's still yeah. other Ping that exists. There's obviously Tri Sentinel for Ping and everything. But I think I got to give it to Mini Shredder uh, for Ping damage here. Now, pick a power. This one was kind of all over the place, but I think which one is aged the best? And which one probably did the best in their respective timelines? I have to give it to Super Scroll. I mean, there was a chance for Jakeem to maybe be considered for King of Pick a Power, but I think I got to give it to Super Scroll. Super Scroll's a beast. Like, as far as Pick a Power know. goes, pre like, Super Scroll just Gobble it. King. Ah, dang. Because his whole yeah. thing was they had to errata it because originally it was you could pick two powers and then you kept those until you picked again. So you could have two powers at the start of your turn and then pick two new ones or whatever. The bad yeah. Time. Bad time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was. Yeah, it's true. It's not great. And they also had to change it so he didn't have like power cosmic on his lower lines and stuff, too. Right. They changed yeah. that as well. That yeah. Was, yeah. That, that was, was probably what really sank it more than anything. I Definitely. I think so. Um, But nah, Super Scroll. He was nasty. Goblin King was just boring to play against. Super Scroll was nasty. Uh. The Horseman of Alpha Strike. Gotta go to my girl, Sam Cap. Come on. Who else was it gonna be? Really? I mean, really? Really? I mean, really? Who? Come on. Uh, and sure, is what she did was call in somebody and then perplex up their stats? Yes, <laughs> exactly what she did, you know? <laughs> um, but she was good at it. So maybe, so maybe she's kind of fighting for the role of call in battery as well. But I think the character I chose for Horseman of Call-In Battery is like, oh, they really are nothing else but a Call-In Battery. Like, that is kind of all they do. And the Call-In Battery is, of course, Lex Luthor, the uh, subterfuge token Lex Luthor. Uh, Obviously, he's 200 points, and he cannot be targeted unless you began your turn adjacent to him, which is really solid. So, you know, he was given, you know, the uh, sidestep plasticity. I believe that was uh, the lust relic most of the time. So he can just kind of walk away from you, you know, so you weren't able to begin the game next to him or begin your turn next to him. He also has running shot pulse wave. So eventually, if you did want to attack, it was going to be pretty gnarly and hit you pretty hard. His leadership could take tokens off himself, which means he could kind of keep calling in people, which was also really good. Um, yeah, this Lex Luthor is nasty. I love this Lex Luthor. He calls in figures that are 200 points. So he's got a really big, like, amount of characters he can call in, which is dope. So, yeah, um, those, those are my horsemen for their, uh, mechanics. And I mean, I guess if we wanted to do horsemen that were like players, we could have like the horsemen of sheer luck for Paris Gordon for just actually, (laughs) you know, somehow winning the horsemen of good timing. Horseman of good timing, sure. Yeah, I'll do that for Felix Faust. Good timing, sure. Uh, the Horseman of terrible taste in food, uh, in the form of Adam Friedman and that Jack's Pizza, which is absolutely disgusting, mm. nasty. Maybe I'm the Horseman of bad food after uh, what I just <laughs> said. Chicken but... parm, yeah, chicken, chicken parm. Uh, the Horseman of, yeah. I, now I can't think of any any uh, else. We'll say, uh, well, there's there's Brian who has Brian dice, so. Sure. I, I think many people Horseman claim bad dice, but Brian sure. actually has quite a few. Uh, there you go. Well, I don't know how to say it. Um, He's got quite a few documented instances of Brian dice. Yeah. Just having just terrible, absolute garbage luck. 
beautiful nice. love it i mean someone's got to someone has to right yeah uh the horsemen are just being real young and better than everyone else isaac arnold <laughs> Burke, you know uh so yeah sure uh next question we have uh jackson says i'm sure you guys have both talked about this a lot but because he is a really big dc fan he wants us to choose five dc figures that we would each make into legacy cards uh just to give dc Ooh, a little bit of a spotlight because we haven't talked about them too much. Simeon, uh, give us a quick rundown, you know, of a figure. Uh, you know, just you go do a DC figure, I'll do a DC figure. Maybe yeah. name one or two things you would change about them if you were to legacy card that figure. You know, so this one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat the one that I said. So I'm actually gonna pick a different one. But uh, the first one I'll go with is from the Origin set, and it's number zero eight eight, Mister Mind. Now, this is one of my okay. favorite sculpts in all of Heroclix. It's a real weird-looking little caterpillar bug man thing. Kind of looks like it has a unibrow, but it's super happy to see you. Uh, and it's in a jar, which it's just great. Um, now, Mr. Mind is 68 points. All he's got is 8 range with 1 target and mind control. A huge 19 defense for the time with willpower and then perplex for 68 points. Uh, a good legacy card version of this would keep the range. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it's a 10 attack with Perplex. I don't think you necessarily need to boost it, but what he definitely needs is a point deduction, so he needs to be dropped to like 40. Uh, the defense is probably fine. Maybe give him a trait where, I don't know, he can do some more flavorful stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I think this is a figure that's prime for, for reuse and for bringing back into the game. It's Really fun to see it on the table, as is. Uh, holds up okay. I'd, I think the one thing I would change, maybe make him tiny-sized so that you could carry him, uh, or carry him easier, I suppose. Um, but yeah, his, his four speed's probably his only real bad downside top dial. And I, I just think if he was a little bit cheaper, we'd be able to play him again and not feel too bad about it. Yeah, I agree. But he was pretty crazy in the... Um... Gosh, what's that? Was that? Was it Supernova versus um uh, the set he was in, right? Uh Mr. Oh, Mind. It was Origin, funny. Yeah. Yeah, Origin, yeah. That was great. He's got that huge defense value. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He would be a really funny uh kind of hard to get a hold of though. I I feel like he's gotta be a little expensive, a little spendy to try well, to uh try to get. let's see if they've got any in stock. TCG player. You can buy it, yeah. It says they've got three on there. Ooh, okay. uh, that's the if you guys have ever been on HD Realms and you see the buy blah 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 and it has a price, they get that price. It's plus shipping already. That price is listed, um, but it shows that uh, whoever the seller is has a couple in stock. I don't know. I'd have to look around. It's yeah, Mister. I'm just gonna type in mind because I don't know how they spelled it. That surely won't pull up too many things. Ah, one thousand and ten. That's not too many. Fine, we'll we'll go Mr. Mind. Uh no, it doesn't show up at all on Cool Stuff Inc., so it might be harder to come by than that. But it's trending yeah. for only three bucks, which means it'll probably okay. be like forty okay. if they get a legacy card. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Uh all right. Uh so my first pick for a legacy card is gonna be the DC tenth anniversary Lex Luthor. Uh I think this is still one of the most perfect Lex Luthers they've ever made. Very flavorful. I really like him. So uh, his kind of the coolest part about him is that once per game, you give him a power action and he places a special object that has kryptonite in the name from outside the game into an adjacent square. So I think we make this like a free action and then we give him a kryptonite light object token. And then it has its own like special rules, right? Uh, as opposed to, because if they made a legacy card of it, they're not going to also make legacy cards of all these other kryptonite objects, right, from back right. Where, wherever, you know. So yeah. I think we just instead make, he makes a kryptonite object token for free once per game. And it has its own special rules, which is whatever characters with the Kryptonian keyword, you know, modify stats, negative one, negative two, depending on how close they are to the kryptonite. You know, I think that'd be really cool. Like if they're adjacent, if they occupy the square... They have negative three stats. If they're one square away, you know, if they're, if they're two squares away, negative two. If they're four squares away, negative one. You know, something like relatively something like that, where it's like the closer they get, the, the weaker they get, I think would be cool. Um, so I think that would be neat. 
And then he has his boom tube travel, which I don't think we would change at all. It's like face and teleport. He moves half his speed. He gets to make a ranged attack as a free action. That's fine. We can totally keep that. That's beautiful chef's kiss. Uh, and then in the middle of his dial, he has charge uh, where my hatred will never die alien, where he becomes more. Obviously, this is also on his second point line. I don't remember what it is, but he's normally 160. I think we could cut his top dial to 125 and it'd be fine. Um, so I, I don't know why I whispered that. We can cut the top dial to 125. It'll be fine. Um, definitely. Uh, if not even cheaper. So on his, whatever his bottom dial is, I don't know. It's probably a hundred for these charge clicks. He's still at 11 for four, but he has the hate. My hatred will never die alien. Lex Luthor deals penetrating damage to characters that possess the Superman ally or the Kryptonian keyword. I think we change that to, uh, Lex Luthor ignores the defense powers of characters that have the Superman ally team ability or the Kryptonian keyword. And then he can also have battle fury as well because it's his hatred will never die and he gets charged. So I think yeah. that just really shows him being mad. So, you know, I, I think that would be a really cool and simple legacy card here for, uh, for this Lex Luthor. So some point changes. And then those changes, I think that'd be really cool. That seems fair. Yeah. Uh, next up on, Mine is going to be from Crisis. I think I might have accidentally just uh, gone with a bunch of mind control pieces. So this is number 052, oh, oh, oh. Psycho Pirate, which is just a really <sighs> fun sculpt. Uh, he's a super rare, 70 points, which is one of like the few that I'll have that is a actual like locked-in point value. Uh, for 70 points, he's got top dial mind control. That's his speed power. He's got in cap with a 9 attack and 18 defense with super senses and then one damage with a special damage power. So this guy needs a little bit of work. Um, mm. So his, his special damage power is fear, hate, loathing. Psycho Pirate can use perplex, but he can modify combat values only by negative two. So can't perplex up his own attack, but he can perplex down an opposing character's defense, uh, which is pretty decent. Um I would like to see some traded like sidestep to get him like moving around. And then one of his big things is he's got on click two, which there's currently no way to really get him to click two too easily with like a legacy card, but um, some sort of like trait to like do it, deal him one click of damage would be cool uh, because on click two, he still keeps that special damage power and then he gets a special defense power. That is, when Psycho Pirate is the target of a successful close combat attack, he ignores the damage dealt unless the attack roll is doubles. Uh, that power being called I'm Your Best Friend. So it's like a shape change, but way better because it requires your opponent to deal doubles or uh, roll doubles. Um, now, of course, your opponent could shoot him from range still, but I think that it's just like a really cool, flavorful power. Uh, if that power came with like a protected outwit, I think it'd be good. Uh, for 70 points, he might need a little rework. I think 50, maybe even like 40, because he is six clicks long. But his down dial just gets worse. He gets shape change poison on the bottom end. Um, really, like his cool part is when he's got both special powers, and that's only on clicks two and three. But. It's a really fun sculpt. It's a really fun character. Uh, yeah, I just... I think it'd be a worthy figure of redoing. And he's a super rare, so he's probably going to be a little bit more expensive to pick up, but it's not like Morgan Le Fay. Uh, it's not something that people would like clamor over or anything. Did you mean to make it a character that already had a legacy card? Like, it's not like Morgan Le Fay? Is that what you're going for? No, I'm just, I'm just saying... Oh, okay. Uh, he's, he's not... Uh, as wanted, like Morgan, I feel Morgan Le Fay had people that wanted that figure prior to oh, the legacy sure. card. Even I don't yeah. think anyone's like going out and getting Psycho Pirate just for just so, to have Roger Hayden. I will say one thing. Oddly enough, I did like look up Psycho Pirate at the beginning of of this, and I did think it was funny that his thing was like, "I'm your best friend." Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was like, I was trying to like remember. There's like, there's some weird DC character who like always pops up when I search something like, oh, yeah, Psycho Pirate. I'm glad. I'm really glad you chose him. So awesome. Uh, my next pick is going to be the Streets of Gotham 027 Guy Gardner. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's like really bad about this figure that needs to be changed. So 142 points. He is never above a 10 attack. 
unless he's on RCE click where he goes to an amazing 11 um, and he goes all the way down to an eight attack. So he has a 10 for three clicks of his dial, uh, nine for three clicks, and then an eight for one click. So his average attack value is, is a nine. So it's, it's really bad. Uh, he starts with a 17 defense. So I think we could change uh, quite a few things to make this guy Gardner way, way better. All right. So he has a trait called I carry his team. When he's adjacent to a character with whom he shares a keyword, unless they have already been modified by this effect, you modify Guy Gardner's damage value by plus one and the adjacent character's defense value uh, by plus one. Uh, so instead of that, I think we maybe give Guy Gardner uh, ESD. Uh, we give him the, oh, I don't know, the Green Lantern team ability. So he can actually, let me think, uh, carry the team. He only has the Justice League, the JLA team ability. He doesn't have. In, yeah okay so with this trait he would get the green lantern team ability i think he gives he'll get esd and then he'll give out esd to everyone or we could just say he gives out the same thing the the you can still give guy gardner the plus one damage value and then give their defense plus one but i think only have the 17 is really rough i think you should have some esd or some cloud reflexes or something or maybe be able to modify everyone's defense by plus one or something, you know, but he should definitely have the Green Lantern team ability so he can actually carry the team. I always thought that was weird. Um, another thing that's weird is that he's very close combat heavy when he has a bazooka <laughs> on his sculpt, <laughs> a bazooka, and he's a charge flurry quake figure top it's one dial. Of those cartoon ones that shoots out a fist. I guess, man, I guess so. So he has normally two fisted charge, is his speed power for his first four clicks, which is charge and flurry. When he uses Flurry to attack the same character twice, damage dealt is going to be penetrating. That's cool. Like, that's, that's fine. That's good. Um, but it doesn't give off the feel for Guy Gardner that I want it to. So we have we have two choices here that we can we can go into. We can either make this his bazooka clicks, or we can make his down dial stuff his bazooka clicks. And we're going to make these ones his bazooka clicks because they need to be. It makes more sense because he's got eight range. And he starts with Charge Flurry. And I don't like it. So we're going to give him Running Shot instead. Uh, so he's going to have Running Shot Energy Explosion. Uh, and then we're going to say when he uses Energy Explosion, he can use three targets. And when he targets uh, more characters in that way, he deals penetrating damage. That's my fix for it. I think that's really, really gnarly and really, really cool. Maybe that's a little wordy, but I think it's, I think it's good. Uh, and then he has on his his really weird clicks down dial where he has three clicks of telekinesis, uh, one click of regen on the end. He has three three clicks of special damage power on five, six, and seven here, which is busting heads, which is exploit weakness, and he gets battle fury. That's okay. I think we just add um, close combat expert to that, so he can at least be somewhat more of a threat when he's an eight for two. Make him at least a nine for three uh, down there. And then that's pretty much what I would do to fix this guy, Gardner. And I would make him, you know, they've never taken a crazy amount of points off. So I don't want to say make him 100 points. But, like, that would be accurate for what he could do. But maybe they could bring him down to 120. I think that'd be, <laughs> it, you know, still not good, but better. Yeah. Or if those I mean, cherry give changes. Him a split dial. Give him a, a two-point thing. That'd be... Uh, also, yeah, a split point dial would be really cool. I wouldn't mind... A uh, split point dial on like click four, where he then starts off with all that same stuff that I said, and then make him fifty points at click four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might I I can see how that could be like an overpowered bottom dial, and that um, would be an overpowered bottom dial. And then you would you never could play do like the. Dial. I kind of think it's like horrible how they do it, but the uh, the like top line is the lower point dial, and then if you pay extra, it's not KO oh. when it crosses. You could do that. Um, if you really, I don't know how much sense that would make for no, this person, but not really, but for but... points wise and getting better, it would make sense for how they do those. But yes, I see what you mean. Yeah, that would work like dial wise, not character wise. But yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. Okay, uh, your third pick. To right. me. My third pick is going to be out of the wonderful set. I I always talk about how Ooh. I love this set so much. Teen Titans numbers here for nine. What? Uh, one oh, of the gosh, only Titans, Teen Titans set characters. I you could probably guess who I'm going to say because yeah, this is one of the only characters yeah. that I think is worth playing out of that set. 
Uh, it's the super rare bunker. There uh, it is. Yep. yep. So in stupid purple guy. Yep. <laughs> Five range, one lightning bolt. Titans team ability, eighty nine points. Which I, uh, let's get to the end of it, and then I'll see what what I think about points. So he's got one trait, and that is psionic constructs. Terrain markers placed by bunker are not removed until they are destroyed or until bunker uses a power that places that type of terrain marker on the map. Um, so in a world of like multiple man being able to drop like, I don't know, eight squares of blocking every turn or whatever for 30 points, um, this guy can do it once and then he's done. Like he can take a power action to put up a barrier and then it stays. So starts off with a special damage power that is barrier and toughness. That's the first three clicks has smoke cloud and force blast to go along with that. So technically you can put out a smoke cloud and it doesn't clear until you put something else out or until it's destroyed, which you can't attack smoke cloud. So that one just stays until you use this power again. Also has yeah, perplex force blast goes on click four through six. So the last three clicks are instead leap climb, a special attack power, willpower with 16 defense and then two damage with close combat expert which you kind of this figure's kind of bad at this point, but uh, that special attack power happens to give Bunker a barrier, incapacitate, and quake. So uh, luckily you're still a, you're a 10 for 3 on click 4, so you can still quake in cap, and you can luckily still barrier. So you lose your smoke cloud ability, but he's got full dial barrier and uh, loses that perplex. But I think... I want to say 50 points is fair for, so he is unique, but I think 50 points is fair for a figure that can place a barrier that doesn't go away unless it's destroyed. Um, the fact that he'd be, wouldn't take pushing damage now is pretty cool. So he could do it like back to back on turns if he needed to. Um, he's not an attacking piece whatsoever. Uh, if your opponent isn't, you know, if you're playing a stealth based team or your opponent, uh, you just want to give them a bunch of minus ones, you could use smoke cloud, although I don't see it ever happening really too often. It is annoying, though, because having a smoke cloud that is just permanently there, it's kind of like uh, Krakoa, the, the living island colossal. When he retaliates, he creates hindering markers all over. Having this guy do that would be equally annoying. Um it's just easier to play around with. But yeah, I, I think he's a solid little figure. I don't know how iconic Bunker is to the whole Teen Titans fandom, but it's one of the only figures from that set that I ever cared about. Bunker. Don't, I mean, I'm just getting PTSD flash. I mean, I, I even won both those games, but yeah. still, like, Bunker was so Slugging annoying. It. Uh, if, I, if he got a legacy card, I, I'd give you 20 bucks. I'd be like, wow, you called it. Son of a gun. They gave Bunker a legacy. I mean, I don't think I don't think they would, but if they did, I'd be like, all right, I can eat that. I'll eat that. Uh my next pick, also, speaking of a character who will never get a legacy card, probably. Uh from the Watchman set, uh 021 Comedian and Night Owl. Uh I wanted to try to just jimmy a watchman figure on this list somehow, and it had to be comedian, because comedian's my boy. Um, so I thought, you know, comedian and night owl. Uh, now, they would never do this because this character is duo attack. So suspension of disbelief here with me uh, really quick. Uh, but they have a eight click long dial. It's got a special attack power for the first three clicks. They have running shot the first click and then it's just leap climb and then no attack power. And then we got some, got some energy explosion down dial. But uh, they're, once again, their average attack value is like a nine. So they got like three clicks of 10, two clicks of eight, three clicks of nine. It's pretty rough, but they at least have some close combat expert down dial when they have those eights, nines, and stuff, uh, which is kind of cool. Their defense also drops like crazy. Uh, it goes down to a 14, 13, and on the last click, a 13 defense, which is really rough. And the only thing you could probably do for this figure is they will add traits. So I would probably add some type of like stealth traits until they make an attack or something like that some form of subterfuge trait because they are just sort of uh watching the people protest until it becomes a riot so something like that would be kind of cool in this like point in the scene of like the movie slash the comic book you know or or maybe even a trait that sort of like 
signifies that they're an arty, you know, for a while, but we already kind of have a night owl like that. So maybe not, um, but something like that basically to help them defensively be a little bit better um, and maybe steel energy. I think we could give them traded steel energy, honestly, uh, like what happened to Ameri- the American dream. You're looking at it type of deal. Cause that is the, uh, you know, the, the famous comedian, funny man quote from that scene. Uh, but they have a special attack bar of the first three clicks, which is this is getting heavy. So after resolutions of a duo attack ability used by them, uh, you roll a d6 and you subtract three, minimum result zero, and you place one action token on a number of adjacent opposing characters equal to the result or or less. And then pushing damage resulting from the tokens is ignored, which is so cool. Wow. Thank you for letting us do our pushing damage. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, so instead, I would maybe change this if we say we no longer have the duo attack ability, right? I, I would right. give them uh, like something very akin to the Winter Soldier, what he has, where um, from ABPI. Let me honestly just look it up. Winter Soldier. Oh, because uh, he has this whole uh, range combat expert. Uh, and then range, make up to two ranged combat attacks. So I would make them, I would give them something like that, where it might honestly just straight up be range combat expert range, make up to two ranged combat attacks, and then after resolutions, uh, make smoke cloud in squares, because median sort of has like a gas gun slashy like rubber bullet like grenade. He has like a grenade launcher in the scene, but he mostly uses it to like shoot gas and like these humongous rubber bullets at people. So maybe something where it's like they can make two ranged combat attacks, then you smoke cloud is free, and even then, also give them incapacitate on top of that or something just really good, you know, just to make them a little more top heavy uh, here. And then cut down their points to I think we could re- realistically bring them down to ninety. Still not good, no. still bad, yeah. but I don't think WizKids wants to chunk off that much points, you know. Right. I think so, legacy yeah. cards are more about weird as it sounds and. Uh doesn't really like make a whole lot of sense because of like the whole bringing it to modern kind of thing i don't think legacy Mm. cards are meant to be played competitively in modern i don't think that's what they're going for if it is then like they're really missing the mark but but yeah i think it's more of like updating you know it's it's giving people something extra to pull and boosters and or not boosters but in bricks and uh it's kind of like updating a figure that you might like still be playing, but uh, now you get like a slightly revamped, possibly better way to play it kind of thing, which is fine. Like if they don't ever get competitive, that's fine. I guess. Yeah. Uh, My next one is from the DC 75th anniversary. Uh, This is the rare number three, uh, the rare number zero three, six animal man. So he comes in at 79 points. I really like Animal Man. I like the comic series, uh, the green, the red, uh, the rot, all the the fun stuff with uh, Swamp Thing or whatever the other guy is. Um, But Animal Man's whole thing in the comics is that he can take on powers and stuff of animals. So his trait is Animal Template. Once at the beginning of your turn, I assume that would be updated to just be at the beginning of your turn. Because once makes it seem kind of strange. Hopefully it's not like once per game. But uh, once at the beginning of your turn, choose a standard attack power, standard speed power, or combat ability that another character within eight squares and with the animal keyword can use. Animal Man can use that power or ability until the beginning of your next turn if he can't already. I think this could be updated to just choose a standard power um, or choose two standard powers even. Uh, So you have to build around this you have to have someone with the animal keyword on your team or somehow on the opposing team i guess would work too um but you could even make it like adjacent instead of eight squares that way it's slightly more balanced i guess uh and then down dial he has the special power special damage power called deus ex machina once during your turn you may force an opposing character to re-roll a roll I really like this power. I don't like that it's in on his last three clicks where he's probably already dead. But uh, if you combine this with like maybe giving him invincible or something, you'd be like rhino hide or I don't know. What's a tough animal? Um, Armadillos for yes. turtle shell. Yeah. Something like tough that. Animal, uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you I give him know. like invincible or something. 
and uh, maybe he makes it to click four, still alive, and he gets to use this once per turn, uh, force an opposing character to re-roll a roll. Mm -hmm. It's once during your turn. Uh, so this is like oh. they make a super sense or an impervious roll or you know something along those lines. Or if you mind control somebody, I guess that doesn't work now because they'd be friendly to you. But um, yeah, it it's one of the like rare powers that lets you re-roll things that don't normally get re-rolled. Uh, he comes in at 79 points. So I think if depending on how many powers they let him pick, it would depend on what his point value should be. Uh, his top dial is charge blades, combat reflexes with two damage. He on clicks three and four goes down to no speed power, but with super strength and super senses. And then he's got that special damage power on click four. And then he loses super strength no attack or speed power on clicks five and six and instead he just has toughness with that re-roll power um yeah leaving his dial as is honestly like i don't mind the blanks in like the attack and speed powers because you're probably picking something anyhow you're picking like hypersonic or precision strike or blades or whatever you're picking anyhow um even steel energy at that point would be fine but I think making him 75 points, if he could pick like three powers, would be okay. Because he's still kind of a squishy dial. He's not protected outwit. All of that's fine. 75 points. Uh, Franklin for 60 had an 11 click long dial where he could pick three. So I don't think that it's outside the realm of possibility yeah. to pick three for 75 uh, with like half the length of dial. And then. If they were going to only let him pick two, or if they were going to like specifically be standard attack, standard speed, or combat ability, uh, which combat ability, I guess, would just be like flight, dolphin, giant, something like that. Uh, back in the day, he could have picked sharpshooter and indom oh, yeah, as well, sure. I suppose. But um, depending on how little they let him pick, I think as is, it would have to be less than it would have to be 60 or less for me to be comfortable with standard attack speed or combat ability because he's real squishy so he might get the first hit but he's real squishy defensively so i think 60 or less would be a fine investment and then if they're only going to let him pick like two things two powers i think like a 40 point piece would be fine but uh, he's a really fun piece. I really actually do like the pick a combat ability. The only problem is I'm probably picking like giant or flight. Honestly, like flight doesn't do a whole lot for me anymore. Like I get to carry somebody. Um, if they let you pick autonomous, I guess that'd be something. I don't know. Yeah. There's not a ton of stuff. To that choose would be from wild, right? Be choose combat ability. I'm like, I'll choose autonomous. Like 60 oh, point autonomous. Yeah. He's son of a gun. Yeah. I mean, 20. as is for 80 points, that's what he can do. You could pick yeah. a speed power, attack power, and then like autonomous because that is a combat ability. That is what he can do, yeah. And yeah. there's a red wing that yeah. has that, so. Ooh, animals, baby. Yeah, play Falcon. Do it. The only, the only bad thing about this animal man is that he's doing the, the old YMC. Yeah. <laughs> he's throwing it's up the Y post. there. Yeah. It is like Instead the like... very classic. Uh, we got an updated... Yeah sculpt and costume but this is like pretty classic looking costume uh the orange and stuff yeah yeah gotcha i got you uh my next pick is element man from world's finest i real, i really like this element man i in fact played him at a uh wko i believe one time uh down in omaha so i i really really liked this this element man uh big fan of him they already fixed a problem with him that I had, which is that he didn't have Indom for 100 points. So they've already fixed that, which is cool. Uh, he has four clicks of sidestep, four clicks of super senses top dial. Uh, he has four clicks of his special attack power. And then he goes down to some flurry, uh, poison, invulnerability, and battle fury clicks on his last two clicks. So he's a six click long figure here. He has a trait, uh, metamorphic. Element man can use plasticity, shape change, and giant reach. When he has no action tokens, he can use face and teleport. I would simply change this trait to uh, when he has no action tokens, he can use face and teleport as free um, just to help him out with movement again. I think that makes it a lot better for sure. 
Um, and then he has periodic arsenal is his special attack power on his first three clicks, which is give element man a free action and choose a standard attack or defense power. Element man may choose the chosen may use the chosen powers until your next turn. Uh, so you can choose two if he wants to, even if the power is lost, uh, which is so even if this power is lost, so even if someone outwits periodic arsenal, he still gets to use those two powers right until your next turn. Uh, and then if element man chose both, an attack and defense power, you deal them one unavoidable damage at the end of your turn. So the way I would do this is he's got a short enough dial and he's like bad enough that I don't think taking damage uh, is good. You know, even if it is accurate. So I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I've never read an element man uh, comic. No clue who the heck Rex Mason is. I just liked him because of what he did and that he had the soldier keyword purely. I liked him because I like that keyword and I like his mechanics in hero clicks. 100%. That's it. I, I don't know anything about Metamorpho, Element Man, whatever. Zero clue, okay? Uh, I would change this to uh, he can choose uh, attack or defense power, right? Or he can choose to modify his attack value or defense power or defense value uh, by plus two. So, like, let's say if he chooses an attack power, he can also modify his attack plus two or choose a defense power, modify his defense plus two or the other way around right so if he chooses an attack power uh he gets his defense plus two or if he chooses a defense power he gets his uh attack plus two so you kind of have to maybe it's a little harder to pick and choose and then i would uh, get rid of the whole dealing him one unavoidable uh damage going on here but i think that'd be kind of cool just to help him out with his lackluster you know 17 defense 10 attack value for stats and everything you know so is he giant yeah. sized or is he just a big sculpt feel like he was a uh, he is taller but he's a relatively normal looking dude he oh i'm thinking he gets giant reach i'm thinking um, alloy um yeah alloy is i was thinking alloy size. sculpt alloy yeah. is huge um, yeah no he's like just sort of like standing thing. there he shares a sculpt with major force uh, it's not victory yeah force major yeah. force that's who it is it's a um, dumb so sculpt. yeah but you know he still has outsiders <laughs> and I think yeah, does, yeah, that does that does amazing would help him a lot too. But I think so point wise, I would take twenty points off, or at the very least ten points off, make him ninety. I think eighty would be solid with the changes. Um, but ninety would be I'd I'd allow it too. But this is a figure I would really like a legacy card for because I had a ton of fun with this element, man. Yeah, and we haven't gotten one since that one. Um, no, we haven't. Yeah, like he's not he's not a very commonly clicked figure. Yeah, uh, I think he's been made twice maybe but no i I do like element man the, i've played that figure i also have never read a comic or anything with him in it so i have no idea where he comes from although element woman or metam yes. metamorpho she... was a woman uh, so oh, was he a girl i know well, there, was... there was yeah a separate person i think it's like okay one of those mystical like they get chosen to be <laughs> this horrible like creature thing uh um, sure <laughs> But yeah, the Metamorpho that I know appeared in uh, the Dream series, the Neil Gaiman series of uh, with like Morpheus okay. and all that stuff. So that's uh, the only okay. time I ever saw it. And that was not a that wasn't a heroic rendition of the character. It was pretty depressing, to be honest. It was a uh, oh. pretty, pretty horrific oh. kind of uh, okay. situation. So dang. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of sadness there. Your um, uh, your last pick, Simeon. My last uh, pick is going to be I. So I was going to pick two other figures from Crisis, but I think I've already mentioned how I like them. So I was going to say Uncle Sam and Chief. Oh yes, um, we both have from Crisis, figures. both really interesting and flavorful figures. Uh, I think they both got played during our Thursday Throwdown, which is why mm -hmm. I I like them. Um, but I decided to go with a figure that I think needs an update even more, and I'll get into why. So this is from the Batman Classic TV set. It's number 11 in the set, the Mad Hatter. Now, 45 Ooh, points. I like this sculpt. Yeah. I so this, this is sculpt. why this is why this figure needs an update, because we've got yes. we've got some yes. sculpt stuff that's going on. We've got some yes. bigger sculpts, and this figure needs to be brought up to pace. So uh, without getting into anything else... He has a special attack power that is called My Hats Make Me Superior. And this power is, when compared from a common surface, 
If the highest point of the Mad Hatter sculpt is above the highest point of the sculpt of any character he targets with an attack, modify Mad Hatter's attack value by plus three. Now, this was not hard to do back in the day because he has like the big word bubble kind of uh, onomatopoeia thing above his head. Yeah. And he used to be a pretty tall sculpt. Uh, he is about average sized now, so you're really going to have to bring out like your micrometers to see which like you know is is the new regenesis wolf or not regenesis uh what was the newest x-men set is the new uh, house of x wolverine taller than mad hatter because he might be he might be now five foot three wolverine might be taller than mad hatter's sculpt now um but yeah so this is the main reason we need an update for this figure so he's got four range two lightning bolts 45 points starts with a nine attack goes down to an eight for the rest of his dial uh, starts with a seven speed, not super important, but he's got a special speed power. And then of course that special attack power that I listed is for his first three clicks on click two. He gets a willpower that he keeps for the rest of his dial, all five clicks of it on click three. He gets a click of perplex. Now his special speed power for his first three clicks is instant mesmerizing device, Zzzt, which is of course that onomatopoeia above his head. Mm. Uh, when the Mad Hatter resolves a move action, place a Zzzt token on this card. Give Mad Hatter a free action and remove a Zzzt token to use mind control normally this turn. You may choose to remove two tokens to use it as a free action instead. Really fun. He's only got four range. So for 45 points, I think he's fine. Um, I, th- I think for 45 points, somebody that can modify their attack by plus three can use mind control, can potentially use it as free. I think that's pretty solid point value. Um, His eight attack is okay, as long as he can get that plus three as well, because that brings him up to an 11. Uh, He does have two other, I don't even know what these are. Uh, He's got super fast hardening plaster. So this is like an elaborate death trap that all these guys had. Um, And that is so elaborate death trap ability and the bonus is equal to the highest click number showing among opposing characters so his elaborate death trap is you give him a power action to make a close combat attack that deals no damage once per game immediately place a hit character on this character's card so it's like capture i guess um a character on this card can use the escape death trap ability and then the escape death trap ability is at the beginning of your turn roll 2d6 the Mad Hatter rolls a d6 and adds his elaborate death trap bonus, maximum bonus 8. If the Mad Hatter is friendly, not on the map, or if your result is higher, place this character in your starting area or adjacent to a friendly character. Otherwise, deal this character damage equal to the difference, maximum 5. Yikes. And when dealt this damage, this character can use its can't. This character can use its defensive powers. It's weird that they worded that that way. But anyhow, it's like the capture ability, but when you roll to get away, it looks like you can take damage. I've never used that part. I never used any of the elaborate death traps. So they could nix that for all I care. Um, What they need to do is take that Deadpool birthday cake base and uh, the oh, legacy card yeah. has to come. So each legacy card <laughs> with the Mad Hatter would have a big old bubbled up section where you can snap that to the bottom of Mad Hatter's dial to That's give him stuck. an extra half inch so that his hats can once again make him superior. I don't think it's too much to ask for 45 points with only four range and two lightning bolts to make him a little bit taller once again, to once again make him superior amongst standard sized hero clicks. Um, now he's still not going to be able to like do that against, uh, like Wendigo or anything that's a two by two most likely, but he'll at least be able to, to keep his plus three when targeting, I don't know, Warpath, multiple man, stupid, big sculpt stuff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. To you. Uh, yeah, I love the idea of bringing old Matt out of here. It's awesome. My my brain shut down for a second, and I was looking at my last <laughs> figure, and I was like, "Did me and Simeon end up both choosing all DC?" And then I realized, goodness gracious, that that's <laughs> that was the that's point. This yeah. entire point, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, that's crazy. Sure. Why would we do that? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so Simeon, you said something earlier about 
uh, generics not getting that many legacy cards because we really only have the one Sentinel and he's already modern, right? Right. So when you said that, it instantly made me think of the greatest generic DC has ever made and how not only does it need a legacy card, but it's, oh no, no, it's, once I say it, you'll be like, oh yes, that is one of the greatest generics. If not the greatest, it's one of the greatest in idea, maybe not in dial, but in idea, it's awesome. So from the Flash set, the greatest generic ever made. The uh, zero ten, the samuroid, uh, okay. robot samurais. <laughs> Come on, dude, these are awesome. So forty five points is so much for these guys. Yeah. Now that you look at it, uh, but yeah, they are looking full at dial like a of minotaur. Blade. Yeah, except yeah, they're only, what really? twenty points for a minotaur. <laughs> yeah, twenty points for a minotaur. These bad boys are forty five points. They have a nine attack, nine speed, sixteen defense, one damage. Top dial. It's a big yikes. Um, so to change it up, um, they do, however, have the Bushido code uh, for their entire dial special damage power which is you modify their attack value plus one for each adjacent opposing character all right uh i think we just simply change that to modify their combat values plus one for each adjacent opposing mm. character okay uh, and then you make them 30 points yeah yeah and maybe yeah. give them stuff so, who knows but i think that simple yeah so i mean it's yeah. on the so we do have things like orphan what was that? Uh, Rebirth that had a similar stat boosting thing. Let me let me see how many points that was. Seventy five for a longer dial, higher stats, modify attack and defense plus one for each adjacent opposing character. No, I I think on paper it might sound a little overpowered, yeah. but I yeah I think that it's fine because uh, as long as you're not grouped up where somebody can become adjacent to multiple of your friendly characters. Um, and even then, like they have to, they have to move the full nine speed and then you have like a turn to retaliate or yeah. for some reason you post it up within five squares of one of these guys. But yeah, uh, even then he's only dealing like four damage to one person. If he's adjacent to the max people, I think that'd be fine. And it would yeah. actually make these guys worth playing and multiples. Yeah. So I, I don't know about you, but I did collect some of these and I would play them from time to time, but they weren't even that good back then. But I just loved the idea of the flying robot samurais is so cool. And I want it. I want it back. I mean, I want it back so bad. So I would love these guys to get a legacy card. It would be really cool. The comments yeah, are weird on this figure. They are. They are strange. A lot of people don't can't figure out if they're generics or not. And thanks to old lady, uh, she, they him, said real name, none. And then old Velcade is calling out old lady. He's like, what on earth are you doing with all these real name posts? Trying to pad your stats? What yeah, a basement you're trying dwelling. Trying to get all that, rep, realms that are... HC Realms rep. You know what I think is love. funny about this is that Velcade uh, commented it the exact same day that old lady commented. Uh, so oh. August 1st, 2017. Uh, Velcade here was on the ball. What are you uh, up to, Velcade? Let's see. Did Velcade Final comment on this thread beforehand? Velcade. They did not comment on this thread beforehand, so I don't know why hmm, they wouldn't have had, knew yeah, to wouldn't go have to this one. They wouldn't have gotten a notification, a notification or anything. Yeah. Uh, so, me think trying to Velcade pad your stats, Velcade, by calling much. them out? No, I think yeah. Velcade's playing both sides. I think they are old lady. Oh, okay. They're trying to pad their rep points by calling someone Double else down. out. Trying to okay. pad their stats. Wow. I see. I see. Another 2017 riddle cracked by the dynamic <laughs> duo. We just keep knocking these out of the park. Uh, uh, Sherlock Simeon and Watson Ness. We've really, we've really cracked the, the really cracked the code. <laughs> Gosh, goodness gracious. Uh, um, that is uh, Jackson's question. One more question here. Um, let's see. It is Bill, and this is, well, this is what are our rankings for Thanksgiving food rankings. Uh, do you want to do top three? Do you want to do one, our yeah, favorite, dude. and then one bad one? What do you What do you think? I don't... Let's Yeah, do top three good, and then one bad. One, one that bad. I can do with her. Sure. Okay. Um, um, 
So my number one, it's got to be a protein. So I'm going to go yeah. with dark meat turkey. Okay. White meat is like a number like eight. I will eat it if it's so there, dry. Yeah. Dry. It's all about that dark meat. It's good stuff. Um, I My number one is also protein. And I think it's kind of got to be, uh, but it's ham. Uh, I'm not a turkey person. I don't, I don't like turkey. I don't eat it normally, but uh, I do love me a uh, good cut of ham. So, uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a ham guy for my for my number one there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, man, my number two. I really want to say. So this is gonna be like the starch category. I really want to go with mashed potatoes, but I think I'm gonna go I'm go with sweet potatoes because sweet potatoes. I don't get them as often. It seems like it's like more of like a Thanksgiving only kind of thing, and I really like a good sweet potato. Okay. Not talking um, about like the the baked sweet potato. I'm talking about like more of like a mashed or like a sliced sweet potato. Because I I don't do the whole marshmallow. Like low, yeah, no, that's no, gross. I don't, do that. I don't know who, who likes that. I don't. Like, know. I heard the first time someone's like, "Do you want marshmallows and brown sugar?" I'm like, "I'm sorry, excuse me, what? Do I want what with a sweet potato? Like marshmallows and brown sugar?" I'm like, "What is wrong with you people? It's a it's a vegetable." Like, I get it that vegetables don't taste that good in general, but come on. It's literally sweeter than an average potato. They taste fine. Goodness great. Yeah, I was like, what? Uh, I have to go potatoes and gravy. Uh, turkey gravy is fine. Uh, ham gravy, also fine. Um, my grandmother would always make it. She was always in charge of uh, the gravy. Would make the absolutely freaking saltiest ham gravy you've ever had in your entire life. Um, in recent years, she's cooled off about that, which I'm very thankful for. Um, <laughs> so I, I prefer ham gravy to turkey gravy. Um, but yeah, I'm a, a mashed, just mashed potatoes. Uh, but yeah, do I'll you, be my number two for so sure. So going back to number one, do you do a ham sauce? Like, and I don't mean like a sauce that goes like, do you do that? Like the dipping sauce for the ham, like the honey mustard kind of sauce? No, not on Thanksgiving. We don't do that. Uh, okay. If I make ham myself, I'll cut some slabs into a pan and I'll kind of pan fry it up, you know, and then I'll eat it with some mustard, you know. But uh, that's like if I'm making my own little ham meal, sitting at home, like oh, man, I'm hungry. I got some ham. Slice up some ham, you know. Um, but yeah, I just, I just like just ham, straight up ham, you know. And it's, it's not like a a Forrest Gump, you know. I'm pitting about 13 Dr. Peppers, Alton <laughs> Brown reference for those who know, uh, cover my ham and like disgusting Dr. Pepper glaze. Um, it's just like, it's just good ham. I just don't know. I like it. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I like eating it more in Turkey. So I just, I'm always doing mouthful of potatoes, mouthful of ham works, works. That's, that's it's how I visual. get through Thanksgiving. Good yeah. Good visual. Good visual. <laughs> All right. A lot uh, of good for, food visuals this episode. For three. Do we want to do dessert table or do we want to do a vegetable? I, well, we already did a vegetable. What are you talking about? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's as close potato. as I get to vegetables, my guy. Uh, <laughs> potato, that's a real vegetable. I, I say, say we got to do a dessert, even yeah. though I've not ate a lot of dessert recently. And I know you're not the biggest dessert guy either, but I feel like no, we have to throw not out the dessert. biggest sweet tooth. Um, yeah. So I'm not all about like the, the pumpkin pie stuff, but I do like I will eat a slice of pumpkin pie uh, this year. Uh so Calder's been to Coneflower. You know Coneflower, Calder. Oh yes. They yep. make an ice cream like ice cream cheesecake uh cherry pie and pecan pie. Ooh. That's Ooh. like it's got a pie crust and then it's their cheesecake ice cream and then like mixed in is either cherries or pecans. And so that is like my new favorite. That's really good because it's literally just ice cream. Uh but in previous years, it was always um, carrot cake. I really love carrot Ooh. cake. It's mostly the icing. Like, who am I kidding? It's the cream cheese frosting. Uh, but, yeah, like those two tied. Yeah, I can vibe with that. I can vibe with that. What's um, never heard, though, of doing carrot cake? Like carrot cake, cream cheese frosting is oh, like a popular for generic, Thanksgiving. But for Thanksgiving, yeah, for Thanksgiving. So though, that's you yeah, know that's I mean? more of like one of uh, my family members' just like traditional dishes that they like to okay. make. So it's definitely not a Thanksgiving food, I guess. Um, 
so I'll, I'll defer to the pie, even though that's not really a classical, because it is an ice cream pie. It's not really a classical, like, Thanksgiving dish either. But no, that's a specifically, like, holiday cake that used to be made, like, at all of our holidays. So it's, like, Thanksgiving, yep. Easter, Christmas. It's just always carrot cake with uh, cream cheese frosting. Sure. And so, okay, I, you know, just for a quick life fact, I hate carrots. Oh, I cannot stand carrots. Maybe in soup, I'll, I'll eat carrots, you know, that'd be about it. Man, I'll, I'll be darned if carrot cake does not slap. Like, it's, it's good. I mean, obviously, it's this certified version of a vegetable right. uh, with cream cheese frosting. But carrot cake is good. And I've yet to yeah, have bad like Sweet potato cake. with marshmallow. Ugh. <laughs> carrot mixed well, with cream cheese, <laughs> nutmeg, and cinnamon. Yeah. I understand that doesn't make a lot of sense uh, from my point of view, from my from my thinking to the app. I agree the, with it, though. I'm listener. Not, but yeah, I don't think it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, but no, nah, like what you said, I, yeah, pumpkin pie. I'm basic, you know, I'll admit that. I don't like pumpkin spice things, but uh, but pumpkin pie and then, you know, a little dollop of whipped cream on top. That's my that's my go to Thanksgiving dessert. Um, we normally just make pies as a family. We don't normally do a ton of other crazy stuff um so yeah i feel i feel a little bad um didn't have any pumpkin pie this year i was trying to really like you know watch it um but uh i did i did have some chocolate pie and it was uh it was rich it was rich but i uh i i normally i'm a humongous pumpkin pie fan love it love that pumpkin pie okay our one our one bad one here Our, our one regrettable decision non-favorite thanksgiving yeah. food um i'm gonna go so this is not a i'll do one that is a normal like appears at our thanksgivings and that is um what is the 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 cranberry oh gross pile of like cranberry okay. stuff i do oh, not cranberry like cranberry gunk i don't yeah. yeah i don't like the consistency i don't like the look um don't like a whole lot about it i'm sure it tastes okay i'm just not gonna try it not anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, and then one that like I only ever had once, but it was a nut loaf. So it was I don't even uh. know what it was made out of, but it instantly gave me a headache and mm. it also didn't taste great. So it was like the texture was fine. It was like a meatloaf, but made out of like pine nuts and maybe quinoa or something. I don't know. It wasn't good. Ah, Let's just say awesome, it, it wasn't good. Vegetables yeah. can do a variety of great things. And like so can not it. so can nuts and like quinoa and like <laughs> you can you can make a lot of nice dishes. Yeah. Baking it into a loaf is a problem. I feel like when people decide to loaf anything besides bananas and bread, a form of bread, I guess. I'm not a fan of loafing. Yeah. Uh, Will it loaf with uh those two guys from that other show that's really successful? <laughs> oh, Rhett and Link. Yeah. With Col- Good morning. Yeah. 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 I watched uh, you the, mean, the episode where they was it uh, Taco Bell Will It Loaf or something like that. Oh gosh! And they just got one of everything on the menu, blended it, and uh, 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 turns out it uh, did. Uh, uh, uh. Can I tell you? There's one food thing that they've made that I want more than anything else, and um, they made uh, snacks from Ultimate Universes or whatever. They made Bang Oreos, and there's nothing in this world that I've ever wanted to try more in my entire life than a Bang <laughs> Oreo. Like that can't taste good with milk. It can't, right? It's no. It's there's zero like chance. blue raspberry bang, like cr- like cookie with like Oreo filling. But I, but I've never been more tempted in my entire life to try something. Okay, uh, so people might, you know, I'm gonna choose a a Thanksgiving food that I don't like that isn't like an iconic one because then people are gonna get mad at me because like I honestly I don't get stuffing. It's like salty breadcrumbs that yeah. are mushy. Like that's disgusting to me. Um, but I will instead just choose something that we always put out on our table. And that is just green olives. I don't know why, <laughs> but we always just sort of have a little dish full of green olives. And I'm like, who is just eating like, these? I know we don't them do in their mouth 99% of the year, but can I interest you in a singular pickle, olive, <laughs> or piece of celery? It's like, yeah, where what are these little plates? Am I? Who <laughs> does that come from? <laughs> And you're exactly right. We we quite literally we do have a plate that is like a miniature pickle, some olives, and some celery. And I'm like, yeah, why? 
what is the purpose of this <laughs> why i feel like I it's like it. a depression era thing where like everything was okay. pickled i oh, so sure. I, I love seeing old-timey recipes where i'm like these people all they had was a larder on like their their kitchen counter uh pickled like preserves stuff like that and they made this like meal so they they hunted like a game bird and i'm like by old-timey i mean like probably like 50s because they it's the kids that grew up in the depression and that like kept making food the way they had it when they were kids for whatever reason but there was what was it i went to a thanksgiving and they had it was like peaches with breading and like cheese and it was supposed to be eaten with the ham and i was like this is such an old-timey you need a lot of calories here's this gross slop that we had left over like cheese and like preserved peaches i was like what is this i will not put this on my ham mm. it's gonna be like one person that's like it's delicious oh, you gotta try it i don't put I cheese on anything sweet i refuse i feel like just cheese and sweetness don't, don't mix cheese is like a fatty it. it's like, it goes on like pie and stuff it's weird. Ugh, that's gross that's nasty or, sorry, disgusting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bing it. Oh, that's right, bing it. Well, I'm Let's I'm gonna see. I'm gonna go duck duck go it over on cheese my end. Cheese on pie, yeah. Cheese on apple pie. It's a thing. I'm not imagining. No, it. that's gross. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't ruin apple pie These like pictures that. Pictures are awful. Of course, it's like sharp cheddar or American, so it's just like the most yellow off putting color. Oh, it is. Yep. Now these are these are some duck duck go images, and I <laughs> I hate this. Oh, ugh, grilled cheese apple pie. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. That's nasty. Ugh, why? <laughs> this is cursed. Oh, it's uh, disgusting. Who would make a sandwich like that? No. How do you like your pie? And it's literally a picture of apple pie with either ice cream on it or cheese on it. Bro, you are sick in the head if you prefer your apple pie with cheese over ice cream. Whoa. Okay, I got to close this. Oh, I'm going to throw up. It's so gross. Oh. Hope you're Yo, happy, you Bill. Cheese. I hope you're happy what you've done to Calder, <sighs> what you've unleashed. I dude, this is like a like you could be dating a girl for three years, and if I take her out <laughs> to get apple pie, and she if she's she's like hey, asked the waiter, have any sharp cheddar or monster <laughs> back there, it's done. It's that could have been the night where I'm like gonna pop the question, <laughs> like I want to yeah, make the, you my wife. The pie comes like, out with a ring. Covered in cheese. <laughs> You're like, just let me have that back. I won't be needing it. I'm sorry. Tonight. Yeah. We're, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw up. This is disgusting. Uh, Let's end the show. Uh, uh, I'm serious. It, it's gross. Oh. <laughs> all right. That's all enough right. food talk. That's enough. This is. And if you need some cheese to end the show, uh, that show being a game of hero clicks, you can get all the hero clicks cheese that you need over at coolstuffinc.com, where they they carry the the most casual to the most competitive pieces available. They've even got sales on some children and ant men and all kinds of different stuff over there. So check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools? It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Yeah, that's real. That was a good segue, Simeon. I mean, disgusting segue, but a good segue nonetheless. Uh, I was impressed. Ooh, we didn't even get into spray cheese as an option. Oh, no. Just no.